That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! I am so 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 happy that Dark Picture joined Monsters and Mortals. Dark Picture is my favorite game that I anticipate every year for the sequel since 2019. For those who don't know what Dark Picture Anthology is, it's actually a game similar to games like Detroit Become Human. <laughs> rain. Telltale Walking Dead. But with a horror twist, it's the same developer from Until Dawn. If you scroll down my channel, you'll find my Until Dawn Minecraft video where you can make your own choices there. By the way, this game is about making choices and there are multiple different ending based on your decision. All the characters can die at any point, so you have to be rational and make a wise decision. Let's start to discuss about what is Dark Picture Anthology. An anthology is when a series provide different set of main character in different settings telling a different story, however they all have some small connection to be put together as a whole series. Currently, Dark Picture only offered three stories. The first is Man of Medan, second is Little Hope while the latest of is House of Ashes. The next installment will be by late 2022, which is The Devil in Me. What make me love this game is due to the fact that each stories are based on real life historical event that is unexplainable. And they will try to explain the unexplainable in a creative way. This game is really deep in a way that it's not just a horror game, it's not just a decision making game. But it's about the moral value that they are trying to explore, and the history that they are teaching us. It's like a history session for me and I love this aspect. Due to the success of my previous video, I will start a playlist known as Monsters and Mortals Guest DLC Dissection. Now, let me give you a summary of each story, then I'll do the speculation at the end of the video. The reason why I don't just jump to House of Ashes is because there are so much depth to this game that I would want to share with you. Buckle up and stay with me. You won't feel regret after staying with me. Let's start with Man of Medan. This story is based on the real-life SS Erin Medan in the post-World War II event. It's ghost ship where there is no registration of entry and exit of the name SS Erin Medan in all ports. It's so mysterious that when the ship was discovered, all the people died in the ship mysteriously with their face being in shock as if they saw something terrifying what's so weird is that they all died due to heart attack. Now that history is told to you, we can start the summary. Basically it starts with the prologue about this ship is shipping something mysterious known as the Manchurian Gold. Then after an accident, all of the crew members died by heart attack. Then, it jumps to the present day where we play as Conrad, Alex, Brad, Julia and Fliss the captain of this boat. They go on a trip to search a World War II wrecked plane that have been rumored in the South Pacific Ocean. While Alex proposed to Julia in the sea, Conrad is pissing off the random pirates that bump into them. In the middle of the night, the pirates seek revenge and take them hostage. One of the pirates managed to locate the location of the rumored Manchurian gold in the stormy night, that's when they bump into the ship Duke of Milan. The pirates took away a major component of the ship and forced the main character to get into the boat to prevent them from escaping. Many horrifying things happened in the ship, the main character is just trying to get back that major component in order to escape while the pirates are here to get that Manchurian gold in order to be wealthy. Plot twist, it turns out that the Manchurian gold are not real gold. It's a biochemical weapon developed in World War II to fight dirty during the war. It's named as Manchurian gold to prevent suspicious while avoid all registration of entry and exit port to prevent anyone to know the presence of this ship is to ship something dirty. The ending depending on how player plays it, everyone might escape, some might die or all of them could die. By the way, all the monsters are hallucinations due to the Manchurian gold chemical. 
This chemical is to cause hallucinations and eventually lead to heart attack due to sudden shock. Next up, let's talk about Little Hope. The idea of Little Hope is based on the real historical event in 1692 known as Salem Witch Trials. It's a very dark period of time, where neighbor accused neighbor. Many people a special woman with red hair are executed because of the reason that they are a witch or associate with witchcraft. It's a really tragic tale to tell. Back to the topic, the story starts off with Anthony the protagonist, Tanya the sister, Dennis the brother, Megan the youngest sister, while the father, James, and the mother, Anne was arguing about the problem of James' factory and Megan. After the argument, James took some beer and slept. Anne is taking a bath in the washroom. Dennis is in the attic. While Anthony discovered something outside of their house and decided to went out. Megan locked the door of washroom and Tanya's room trapping them in their respective room. Megan then took down the stair that leads up to the attic trapping Dennis in the attic. She is manipulated by evil force to set a match to the house, burning the house. James died by being crushed alive, and died by suffocation. Dennis died by impalement, while depending on player's choice, Tanya will die in either hanged to death or burned alive. Megan is also being burned alive. Anthony is the only one alive. Back to the present day, bus driver takes students Andrew, Angela, Taylor and Daniel and their professor John on the trip. Mysteriously, they looked the same as the characters from the prologue. Then, they crashed the bus due to a girl in the middle of the road that looks like Megan. They enter deeper into the mist just to find out that they are trapped in a time loop. Oddly, they can't walk out of the mist, so they decide to enter the town of Little Hope. One by one, they experience strange events of being able to travel back to the year 1692 that occur the witch trial. This game is so clever to explain the unexplainable events of witchcraft, because the five main protagonists are able to interfere their past self. However, interfering doesn't make much of a difference because those victims have been accused, interfering would just makes them even more believable that they are associate with witchcraft. Nothing can change the fact that something had happened will not change the future, it's already a past tense. Coincidentally, they all die the same way just like the prologue. Joseph was crushed to death, Amy was suffocated to death in water, David was impaled to death and Tonya was either hanged to death or burned to death depending on the prologue. During the present day, they all turned into a living monster to pursue and kill their own future self. If you manage to get the main character killed, they will also die in the same way as their two previous past life. Coincidentally, they all have the same letter in the first letter of their name. In the end, despite being able to save everyone alive or you manage to kill everyone. Plot twist alert. It's revealed that none of the main protagonists exist. Andrew is actually the bus driver in the beginning, and the identity of the bus driver is actually Anthony, the main protagonist in the prologue. After the event of that night, he started developing survival guilt. Survival guilt is when someone managed to survive from a traumatic event and feeling guilty that he or she somehow managed to survive, they might feel like they don't deserve to live due to the other members are dead in that traumatic event. Same goes to Anthony, all the event in Little Hope is just all his imagination due to survival guilt. It's really mind-blowing. Can everyone just shut up? This isn't helping us find help or getting us out of here. Which is why I love this story so much. The story of Little Hope is trying to tell us that, something that has happened, has already happened, we can't change the past no matter how hard we try. But at least we have to focus on making ourselves feel better just like Anthony tries to make himself feeling better by saving all his imaginary family members in his imagination. It's really meaningful. Basically Little Hope is trying to explain the event of Salem Witch Trials with the idea of time travel and time loop. Finally, the main dishes that you all have been waiting for. House of Ashes. House of Ashes is based on real-life Sumerian underworld myth where the afterlife will live in there to consume dry dust without food or drink. The whole location and timeline of the prologue take place in 2231 BC which is the time of Babylon still exist in the ancient Mesopotamia. 
just like the previous two story, let me brief you through some history session of the inspiration of House of Ashes. Sumerian is a religion practiced by the people of the ancient Mesopotamia. They have a belief in the Sumerian underworld known as Kur. In the Sumerian myth, they have a monster regarded as Anzau. As you can see here, the creature with wings in this artifact tablet is what inspired the design of the creature of House of Ashes. Sumerian myth is also famous about Pazuzu, a demon god that is usually regarded as evil but he could also sometimes be a beneficent entity. It's Pazuzu. Pazuzu who? Pazuzu. Do you know which horror movies? This line from Rachel is actually referencing the movie because Pazuzu appeared in that movie. Now that history session is done. Let's begin the story. The prologue ends with the king Naram-Sin unleash something evil upon the eclipse which ends up killing himself too. Balathu and Kuran put their differences aside and battle the monster. But both of them doesn't have a good ending. Back to the present day which take place during the year of 2003 invasion of Iraq. We play as five characters again. Rachel, CIA field officer. Eric, lieutenant colonel. Nick, marine sergeant. Jason, first lieutenant. And last but not least, an Iraqi lieutenant, Salim Othman. They engage in a battle, however an earthquake caused all of the main characters drop deep in the underground finding themselves trapped in an ancient building of Babylon. Apparently the ancient Mesopotamia is trapped underneath the ground. This explained why we couldn't find much information about the missing city of Babylon and majority of the ancient Mesopotamia artifacts. Slowly, they discovered that they are not the first to be here. There was an expedition crew that discovered this place long ago. Then they discover some sort of bats creature are inhabiting in this place. They have to put aside their differences to deal with this vampire creatures. Plot twist, the deeper they venture, they arrived in a weird alien spaceship with high technology that they couldn't event understand. Basically, those vampires are aliens from the outside world. The nature of the aliens aren't vampires that feed on human. But apparently, the parasitic alien worm is the real monster. Most of the alien creatures are infected by these parasite. Hence, this explains why the infected humans despite being in millennial years after, they still haven't transformed into the bat creatures. Because they are two different creatures but infected by the same parasite. Maybe those aliens aren't harmful at all, they are just infected by the parasite and crashed into the earth long before ancient Mesopotamia existed. After they all escaped the underground, they thought everything is over. But eclipse happened right after which lead to the alien flying out of the underground. By the way, the aliens are weak to UV lights. Hence the UV light from Eric and the UV lights from the natural sun will harm them like a vampire. That is why the aliens flying out during eclipse. They hold off for 6 minutes until the eclipse completely passed. However, they ended up being captured by a secret organization to keep this event being spread to the public. I really love this design, it explained why ancient Mesopotamia are still remain a mystery till this day because they are still somewhere underground, and there is a secret organization that prevent people from knowing the truth. By the way, the moral value of this story is about putting your differences aside. The enemy of my enemy is a friend is a theme being represented greatly in this story. By the way, I will split the video into two parts. So part two will be focusing on the speculation, because this video is kinda too long already. See you in part two and I hope you truly enjoyed my storytelling today. Goodbye.